This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 804, Three Ways to Live More Present and Productive, by Emma Scheib with alifeinprogress.ca. And I'm Dan, I am the guy who's with you every single day, including weekends and holidays, reading from some great blogs on entrepreneurship. And as I said, we're gonna hear from Emma Scheib, who's writing with A Life in Progress. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that site and about Emma after I'm done with today's reading. So let's get right to it now as we optimize your life. Three Ways to Live More Present and Productive by Emma Scheib with alifeinprogress.ca. As a recovering perfectionist and type A personality, Productivity has been a longtime friend of mine, or at least I thought it was. Turns out I was really best friends with busyness, not productivity. And busyness can be anything but a friend. My journey towards a slower and more intentional life is a few years in the making now, and this realization has been my latest signpost. Sometimes these epiphanies literally stop me in my tracks. One day recently, I paused in the middle of a run, dog looking at me strangely, and pondered this new signpost. Productivity and busyness are not the same thing. To live present and productive, we need to understand that productivity and busyness are not the same thing. Sometimes busyness and productivity look and sound alike, but actually, they aren't that closely related at all. Busyness gets dressed up all fancy, puts some high heels and lipstick on, and pretends she's productivity. But at her core, busyness is this multitasking, overworking, mindlessness, overconsumption, exhaustion, and a fractured existence. And sometimes, busyness is a band-aid to cover up the things that need to be felt. Productivity is much more elegant and authentic. She single tasks, focuses, rests, aims for a healthy balance between consumption and creating, and she requires us to be present in the moment. Productivity can sometimes look like busy too, This usually happens when we have made a conscious decision to tilt towards work or play for a season. I instantly knew which one I'd rather abide in. So now that I knew how different they were, I felt like I needed to know why they were so different and why they were often mistaken for each other. The difference between productivity and busyness. And then it hit me. The difference between productivity and busyness is intention. Intention is the key ingredient we need for our lives to be productive and not busy. I'll be honest with you, when I decided a few years ago to let go of busyness and perfection, I did so with a bit of reluctance. I enjoy being productive, and I'm a list kind of girl. So even though I knew I badly needed to slow down and simplify my life, I didn't necessarily want to give up all of the things I was doing that made me busy. What I wanted was to do each thing more intentionally to be more present and feel less like a chicken running around with its head cut off for most of the day. I wanted the sweet satisfaction that comes with achieving my goals, minus the exhaustion that had usually accompanied it before. If intention is the key difference and key ingredient in making the switch from busy to productive, you might be interested in knowing how to add more intention to your day. Three ways to bring intention to your life and start living more present and productive. One, set intentions. You could start each day by setting an intention. It's not as airy-fairy as it sounds. The concept is a wee bit subjective, but this is my take on it. My intention is a representation of who I want to be each day, not what I want to do. For example, today I will be brave and strong, or today I can do anything, but not everything. The idea is that this intention can help you navigate your day and focus on what's important to you. You can make up your own, but there are also plenty of places to find inspiring quotes for your intention or mantra online. And you don't need to choose a new one each day. You might decide that there are a few that really resonate with you. You could even get them printed and hang them on your fridge or above your desk. Two, single task. This is a productivity tool, but I believe that single tasking enables and invites intention into our lives. The opposite of this is what is commonly referred to as multitasking, But what we are usually doing is task switching. In the middle of cooking dinner, you answer your phone. On your way back to stirring the pot, you decide to quickly fold some washing. You then discover your preschooler has just drawn on her baby sister's face with a permanent marker. You scrub her face, the pot boils over, and you feel fractured and overwhelmed. This task switching or multitasking is anything but intentional. 
I get that we can't always live in a state of cool and calm and single-tasking, particularly with young children, but the more we practice it and bringing intention to our tasks, the easier it will become. And three, be mindful. Approach your everyday tasks, even your habitual ones, and 40% of our everyday behaviors are habitual, with mindfulness. Making your kids' lunches? Switch off the autopilot and get back in the driver's seat. Notice what you are doing. Notice each movement. Slice the cheese with grace. Butter the bread with finesse. Every movement and moment offers us something new. Start out by trying to do something mindfully just once per day. Something I love to do is to read to my children mindfully. But do you know how many times I've read them their bedtime story while thinking about something else? I still can't comprehend how this is possible, but it happens all the time. So, every few days, I try and remind myself to read the story mindfully. I think we both enjoy this special time more when I do this. I hope that these practical tips can help you be more present and productive, and less busy and fractured. You just listened to the post titled Three Ways to Live More Present and Productive by Emma Scheib with alifeinprogress.com. And thank you to Emma. Emma Scheib gained her master's in psychology in 2013 and has since worked full-time in corporate research positions for government agencies. She recently gave up her quote-unquote dream job to pursue being a happier mom, living a slower pace of life. She is also dipping her toes back into her long-lost love, creative writing. She writes regularly over at Simple Slow Lovely, and you can also connect with her on Facebook and Instagram. And thank you to Krista for letting us share her posts from a alifeinprogress.ca. But I think that does it for today. I thank you for being a subscriber to the show and uh, hope you're having a great day. And I'll see you back here tomorrow as usual, where your optimal life awaits.